Hi everyone, my name is Karen Pack, and thanks for watching this presentation on my interpretation of paradigms used in qualitative inquiry methods. This presentation is designed to help visualize how I've come to understand the various approaches we've engaged in this course. Taking a look at the roadmap, the paradigm analysis will compare differences in ontology, epistemology, purposes, role of researcher, researcher-participant relationship, and methods. So the paradigms we'll look at include positivist, interpretivist, critical, and post-structural. If I could use one word to describe each, it would be as follows. For positivist, it would be to discover, interpretivist, to understand, critical, to emancipate, and post-structural, to challenge. What is a paradigm? A paradigm is a set of assumptions and perceptual orientations shared by members of a research community. Paradigms determine how members of research communities view both the phenomena their particular community studies and the research methods that should be employed to study those phenomena. By creating multiple portraits of each paradigm, Siphon Constable created an effective visualization to understand differences to each approach. In a similar way, I will attempt to explore paradigmatic differences represented by animals. So first we have the positivist paradigm. Probably the best example that I could think of was the lab rat. So lab rats and rodents are often used in quantitative experiments because they are subjects that are easy to control, cheap, and genetically similar. Inbreeding can allow for creating similar genetic test subjects, and by min minimizing genetic differences, scientists are able to neutralize variables that could impact interpretation of outcomes. Similarly, the positivist approach attempts to control as many variables as possible in order to prove or achieve a particular outcome. As an example, a report produced by Clara Fontevilla and Anthony Berger uses content analysis methodology to demonstrate the disconnect in World Bank documents between their knowledge product documents and lending project documents. The study identifies particular language around teachers quantifying recommendations and characteristics, then comparing these against how projects have been funded to meet the, these needs. Next, we have the interpretivist paradigm. The example I thought of for this was the house pet. And house pets are similar to the interpretivist paradigm in that they are responsive, interactive, and relational. There are attempts to understand the needs and personalities of the owner as well as the pet. In this way, knowledge is created and shaped by both. In the interpretivist approach, researchers allow stories and experiences to come from the subjects and then attempt to interpret and present these stories through various means of coding. In a study conducted by lead researcher and OISE professor Claire Kosnick, teacher educators from four different countries were asked to share their experiences of transitioning from teacher to teacher educator. Through interviews reflecting various experiences, researchers were able to code four areas of development that emerged as key elements of quality teacher educators. Next, we have the critical paradigm. And for this, I chose circus animals to reflect the critical paradigm because of the power dynamic that applies. Reality and knowledge are shaped by an oppressive force onto a group that live multiple truths. There can be a strong desire to create change and question who holds the power, why the power exists, and what can be done in response. The critical paradigm often evokes action-oriented methodology where researchers find points of entry to disrupt power and create agency for the oppressed. Susan Robertson's article aims to give voice to teachers who have become invisible amongst global governance agencies. These agencies, whose policies impose what she calls a symbolic control over teachers, are designed to direct teachers to participate in the economization of education, politicizing the purpose of schooling. Last, we have the post-structural paradigm. And for this, I chose to represent this through oceanic life, partly because ocean life 
lives predominantly underwater and is a completely different element and therefore a completely different reality, I felt this represented this paradigm well. There are so many unknowable factors that contribute to how reality is formed. This paradigm aims to challenge and shift our perception of reality, partly due to power structures that have evolved over time through vehicles like language. Similarly, this paradigm challenges what is knowable and how it is known. Part of the researcher's role is to question how knowledge came to be and critique its evolution. An example of this paradigm used in research comes from Michael Zimbales, who wanted to investigate the genealogy of emotion and how social construction impacted the way teacher identities were shaped and influenced by what particular emotions reflected. Problematizing the association of specific emotions and its ability to legitimize the shaming or inappropriateness of teacher conduct provided an opportunity to re-examine the myth that teacher identity does not need to be defined by emotional control, but rather where and when the language around emotions are rooted. So this is my presentation on paradigm um, differences and thank you for following along. I hope that this presentation provided some new perspective on paradigms used in qualitative inquiry.